My name is Matthew Shoup. Chris Cox. Amy Solomon. Michael Gallagher. Sarah Morris. Neil Utah. Ula Person. Dave Costa. Leanna Nixon. Jackson Osborne. The ASFS is the Atmospheric Surface Flux Station. And these stations that we built are uh, stations uh, with the intent of measuring all components of the surface energy budget. And so these stations measure uh, the radiative components of the surface energy budget, the turbulent, sensible, and latent heat flux components, uh, and the conductive heat flux through the sea ice. The reason why the surface energy budget is so important is because it tells you uh, how the atmospheric uh, processes are interacting with the sea ice. They're basically, if that energy budget is positive, then you're either raising its temperature or you're actually melting it. Mosaic, the multidisciplinary drifting observatory for the study of Arctic climate, was an international research expedition to study the Arctic climate system. Beginning in fall 2019, the icebreaker called Polar Stern drifted in Arctic sea ice for over a year and served as an intensive observatory, allowing scientists to collect data in every season. Surrounding the ship was a distributed network of key measurements that would capture information on spatial variability that will contribute to model improvements, sea ice forecasting, and weather and climate prediction. It's really incredible that this Mosaic campaign was as successful as it was. Uh, there were so many challenges, not just from COVID, which was huge in terms of uh, transport was not available, that what they were relying on to provide new crew to and from the ship. Um, but also there was a very strong polar vortex and the near surface winds were much stronger than they had anticipated. And so the ship was drifting much faster than they had anticipated. The PSL research team started assembling the first ASFS in early summer 2019 in Boulder, Colorado. That particular summer, there was a heat wave in June and the team was forced to build the ASFS in 100 degree heat while navigating challenges for a system that would function in minus 40 Arctic temperatures. The team finished building three ASFS by the end of July 2019. We developed it specifically for Mosaic um, from a napkin doodle in October 2018 or whatever it was to um, the three finished products that were shipped in July of 2019. We didn't have the opportunity to go to the Arctic and test them ahead of time. So um, again, yeah, try to build in some flexibility so that you can, you can adapt the system to its environment when you get there. methanol fuel cells were definitely a concern. We didn't know how they were going to perform during the winter months. Uh, there was some cold testing before shipping everything off to Germany, but there were still some questions about how these systems would actually perform in the Arctic. The communications was a big problem that we had to solve because some of these instruments were gonna be further away from the ship than uh, a normal radio signal could, could reach. So we chose to go with uh, Iridium satellite communication that would transmit the data to satellites and bring it back down to the ship so we could continually have contact with each instrument while it was out there. To develop the ASFS, uh, we had to pull from our entire team here at PSL, and that included engineers, researchers, uh, meteorologists, uh, you know, experts in IT and communication, logistics managers, communication teams, um, we, you know, we, we had to build these in house from nothing. And so there were a lot of factors at play and it took everyone, it took a village to get these things off the ground. The, the deployment of the systems was, uh, in a word, pretty fast, right? So we left Tromsø in uh, September 20th, I think the ships left, and we were back in late October, but the actual deployment of the distributed network only lasted about a week. So uh, the first uh, system went out to the site L1 on October 5th, the second one to uh, L2 on October 7th, and then the third one to L3 on October 10th. We had been out to, to visit a station uh, a, a couple days prior, uh, and then 
you know, here we are back at the ship and uh, the station went offline. We just lost communication with the station altogether. And it turns out there was a little bump uh, in the system. So we figured, hmm, something that's about three times as big as us must have bumped this. And so at the time I was like, you know, I bet a polar bear was there messing with our system because that would be right about the, the right amount of energy, if you will, uh, of pushing on the system. You know, you could tell a polar bear had swiped it, damaged some cables and, you know, bent a few things. Um, and so it, it was actually really interesting to try to put together the pieces of that puzzle to kind of remotely diagnose what, what might have happened. There was this particular event where there had been two storms that happened in a row. So the first storm actually killed one of our three remote stations where we take um, weather data out much, much further from Polarstern. And so we're walking around in the darkness with our headlamps and the helicopter, and we're like, where is this? And we look and we look and we look. The short version of the story is after the 16 hours, we broke it all free. We set up a whole rigging system where we orchestrated these pulleys and these points so that we could pull it out without breaking it more. We were able to get it out of the ice and we were able to um, set it up and to assess it. And actually, somehow, not much was broken. There was a few instruments that were broken, but we had spares for those specific instruments. All of the important stuff was not broken um, through pure luck. And turns out the real end of the story is Chris Cox was able to come out um, when the sun had come up on the next leg to go out with the helicopter to pick it up and to save it and to rescue it. And it actually took data all the way until the end of Mosaic, um, which was fantastic. It was, you know, it ended up being one of the last surviving pieces of equipment and we got seven more months of data out of it. The Polar Stern icebreaker was forced to leave the Mosaic ice flow to resupply crew, personnel, fuel, and provisions. Due to the global COVID-19 pandemic, all previously scheduled resupply vessels were docked. Scientists and crew on board the Polar Stern quickly hatched a plan to leave the scientific equipment on the ice in hopes that it would continuously collect data while they were away. The ASFS was one of the only pieces of equipment that was able to successfully collect data during this time. We just didn't have any other alternatives at the time because there were no other vessels available, travel was very difficult, uh, and so we unfortunately had to bring the ship out of the sea ice and this was not part of the plan. Fortunately, we had these ASFS stations uh, and we could leave one behind at the primary mosaic ice flow, the one that we've been following for the whole year and, and monitoring all these changes. We could leave an ASFS right there on the middle of that flow, even as the ship left, to monitor all the details of how this transition towards the melt season played out. In spite of the fact that we, the people and the ship were actually gone at the time. So, you know, this is a huge success story for these ASFS stations. During leg four, the ice flow had dissolved into open water, marking an unprecedented early melt season that was not expected. The participants of leg five were tasked with rebuilding the mosaic research camps onto a completely new ice flow that they hoped would last the rest of the summer. We had to set up a new flow, and part of setting up that new um, observatory where we could take instruments after the old flow had been destroyed because it had moved more quickly than was expected, um, we had to take all of the old equipment and rebuild something completely from scratch. At this new ice flow, the meteorological tower was reconstructed with two ASFS located nearby for additional spatial information. By reinstalling the tower and ASFS on the new ice flow, the team could ensure that there would not be a gap in the meteorological data record, despite the unexpected degradation of the original ice flow. The ASFSs were very successful. Um, I think maybe particularly in, I feel like they were really designed and the place where they really shone was during leg two, because to try to get a surface energy balance over the Arctic ice pack in the winter time is an enormous challenge. And there are very, very few data sets that exist like that. You know, it really does take a laboratory like PSL uh, to do 
uh, bigger things like this, bigger projects that take a long time to develop and that require all these different skills. And so, uh, you know, ASFS, I think, really does highlight uh, some of the great cross-cutting strengths that we have at PSL. greatest challenge is yet to come and that is to take all this data and actually make sense of it and to actually answer questions um, with all this data.